Alex, you're back here on the program. I'm going to introduce you to a Canadian filmmaker who, as uh, we've discussed offstage, in his age, in the sweet spot now uh, for what he's done. He's got this phrase called bare knuckle cinema, which is an incredible way to describe quality filmmaking. He's certainly his. Uh, this interesting story, Aboriginal life, 70s, and he's doing it a little bit differently. Bare knuckle cinema is exactly it. Rhymes for Young Ghouls is the film. Take a look at this clip. Help the rain. We have honey dip blunts for the drum and feather Indians who like to keep it all natural, to smoke down close to the great spirit or whatever. And then you have broken resurrects who want nothing more than to get for bottom dollar. This is what brings my people together. They are to forget from this. Filmmaker in question is Jeff Barnaby. Thank you, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Walk me through it. How did it start for you? Um, we got approached by the Canadian Film Center to write something that was a little bit more in their budget byline. And uh, that's kind of how it all started. How about content? Were they looking for... I mean, obviously they liked no, what no. you did. They, that's the great thing about CFC. They didn't ask any specific kind of content. They just said, go and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, basically what I did. Well, I'm sure growing up you've seen reserve life depicted in certain ways and often from different perspectives. So when you know you're going to tell a story, do you have... And I say this, when I was reading what the guys from Shaun of the Dead did when they made their film, yeah. they decided to take every cliché ever about that genre and make sure they include it. Other filmmakers go, every stereotype, I exclude it. Yeah. But something like this is something that's so obviously, it's an important time to tell the story. Yeah. How did you approach that? Um, I didn't give a damn what other people were doing. I mean, they could make any kind of film they want to make about Indians. It didn't make any difference to me. It wasn't like I was going to do the scene out of, uh, like, smoke signals where it's like John Wayne's teeth. Like, I don't give a damn about John Wayne. What the, <laughs> hell do, what the hell do I have to do with John Wayne? And ha had it been because you didn't feel like it was represented properly before or the story wasn't Yeah, honest? I definitely got a sense that it wasn't, like, represented properly at all because if you look at something like, uh, I don't know, the one movie that I remember growing up was uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with uh, Chief and, you know, I didn't associate with that dude at all. And I didn't associate with the, the guys on North of 60 or Beachcombers or anything like that. Those weren't the guys that I grew up around. And those are the people that I wanted to put on screen. But that didn't even enter my brain until I was, like, in my 20s. It just uh, happened. It wasn't something that I consciously set out to do. It was just something that I had to do, if that makes any kind of sense. Sure, but did you know when you were watching it, were you conscious of the fact that I don't know those guys? Those guys aren't me. That's somebody else's depiction of me. Not really. I think when you're when you're a native person and you see Indians on screen, you kind of get excited. It's like, oh, look, a real Indian. And <laughs> it's not like uh, some German dude, you know, named Scar in, in red face. It's, right. it's, it's an actual native dude. Unless it's Johnny Depp, but that's different, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, what do you want from Disney? Yeah. So I think I didn't... Uh, I didn't really kind of set out to reinvent a, a genre. I didn't even know the genre existed. I just uh, wanted to do the movies I wanted to do, basically. You, remember, you may remember this feature here. Take a look at this. Oh. It's a documentary, Alanisa Bobsawin, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that was an important documentary, but what did that mean to you? That's 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 where I grew up. That's that's uh, that's one of my earliest memories of uh, of my reserve. I was four years old at the time that happened, and that it's seared into your brain. I mean, think about being a young man and you know nothing about the outside world, but the outside world comes knocking at your door, and they come armed to the teeth, and and you know looking to bust your head. And that was my first definition of of what non-native Canadians thought about Indians, and that stuck with me. And that documentary um, encapsulated this idea of films 
being a form of social protest for me. And that's something that didn't even dawn on me until I was much older that, you know, it started right there with that film. And it, it became that, that, it's so strange that you picked that scene too, because that scene, you know, I, I took my ax and I made it, you know, a line in the sand and I told him to step across it. That, encom that, that encompasses my complete philosophy of filmmaking, of being a native person in, in Canada. That, that one, that one old man with that axe, and I have family members in that film, and uh, I think it's still, you know, I still, st I still think it speaks to the community, and I, I, I still think it speaks, you know, volumes about the community. You look at uh, El's book, book, it's, it's still going on. So you could sit there and say, oh well, all this stuff is ancient history. It's not. It's still going on. Micmacs like to fight, man, and you can't just come knocking at their door and expect them to roll over and, and just give stuff to you. I think, you know, it's, it's a testament to the spirit of the people and that area that, you know, there seems to be a documentary crew down there every eight years, you know, covering some sort of protest because, I don't know, why people just don't learn. It's, it's Micmacs are first contact Indians. We've been doing this for Centuries. Right. Been doing this for centuries. These these stories are important to you. Like what you're talking about is important to you. But as a filmmaker, filmmakers want to tell all kinds of stories, and they don't all have direct connections to them necessarily. But working on other projects and working in other spaces as a filmmaker. Well, it's interesting you ask because I never started out as doing native stories. That's something that came a little later. Um, when I first started, uh, I was kind of into horror and science fiction. I was a genre filmmaker. Which you bring that a little bit into this, right? Uh, big time. Yeah, which, I, which, is, which is, I thought was really cool because I hadn't seen that being done before. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're bored kid on a reserve. Of course, you're going to, you know, watch movies if you're, not, if you're not drinking or if you're not going out and getting in trouble. Uh, you're you're going to entertain yourself with films, and I think uh, I got the best uh, film education you could get. But how did you find those films? Um... Well, Kung Fu Classics on CBC, <laughs> uh, Shock Theater on ASN would yeah. play all these old films. And I would see stuff like Leolo and, and The Wall and Blade Runner and, like, all these really great films. Well, and then seeing Cronenberg films, right, and realizing exactly. a Canadian guy was doing it, right? Exactly. Well, I didn't even register in my brain that it was Canadian. It was just, you know, just crazy. Like, this... <laughs> starting infections with, like, a penis in the underarm. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, of course you're going to like it. It's just such a weird thing to see when you're, when you're a kid. Plus, my, my brothers were just, you know, total heathens, and they would show me anything. Like, I saw Evil Dead when I was, like, five. I, would show the, I saw The Exorcist when I was, like, way too young for it to be appropriate. Yeah. So all this stuff got really seared into my brain at a very young age, and I was getting educated visually without even knowing it. Oh, I'm really glad you did, man. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> well done. You can see the film Rhymes for Young Girls. It opens in Toronto on January the 31st. Make sure you go check it out. And there's a man who brought it to you, Jeff Barnaby. We'll be right back.